Welcome to today's tutorial on Aspire 3.3. In Aspire 3 we updated and upgraded the way we work with the building the pipe network using a 3D view and updating the 3D view. But the other part of coming up with a good design is to actually calculate um, hole sizes that are going to be appropriate to so have a well balanced um, evenly sampling system. The SPY 3.3 um, has changed the interface to allow this to be done more easily. So I'll just go through and explain how that works and some of the concepts behind that. <clears throat> so to do that I've already started with a structure containing three pipes. So we've got a detector, we have a look here, we've got a VU and we've got three pipes. So we've got two T's, this one, this one, and a straight section here. One of the things I'll start off with is that on the project um, tab here, there's now this control here that says whether we're working in a standard interface or an advanced interface. I'd recommend working with a standard interface in most circumstances. And that is the interface I'll be working with mostly today. So what's the difference? <clears throat> if we come to the detector, you'll see that this page is a lot simpler than what it used to be. That the main things you need to define here are the type of detector, you can give the detector a name, and the speed of the detector. Now, the other very important thing is what sort of sensitivity objective you're aiming for. So do you have a system that's for a, a data center and therefore requiring um, high sensitivity? Or are you working with more general setup? Um, in which case you just need um, a standard sensitivity. So in this case we've got like an EN54 Class C, uh, which is quite a general one. So once we've defined that, that really is all that we need to define now. And then we hit the auto balance to tell it to go and find a solution for us. So you will see in this case, we've come back with a solution. We moved on to this calculation tab. And what that does is it uses a sensitivity objective with a safety factor. And that then defines what thresholds that you need to apply. So you don't have to worry yourself about what thresholds, because what you need to stay focused on is what the sensitivity target is. Now, the safety factor is an important concept. The safety factor gives you just a little bit of room to move when the system's being implemented. <coughs> Basically, what is allowing in this case is a 10% margin of error for the installer installing the system um, so that the performance that we're calculating for is not right up against the limits so that we don't go uh, designing and implementing a system for, in this case, Class C, but say it could be Class B, and then find we're just slightly outside the, the limits of that system. So this gives us a safety factor um, which we can switch off by going to 0% but I'd normally recommend staying around 10%. Um, and so if we were then, when we then go and um, configure our system, here are the thresholds that get used. And if we're using VSC to configure the system, we can import this file file directly into VSC to actually get those thresholds imported in. Um, there's some other constraints you can see, like this minimum hole flow, target pressure, but we'll leave those for a moment. Um, if you want to, we can change our target so we could decide we'll go for class B. Um, if we were to go for class B we have a tighter balance um, target for this one and so we would need to 
come up with a different solution to try and match that. So in that case we could, we could do an auto balance here. Um, but what we're finding in this case is the best we can achieve is 69% and we're hitting a problem where we're running out of pressure. And so what that's suggesting here is we've got a lack of pressure in our system and one of the actions we can do to uh, try and correct this is increase the aspirator speed. So let's just try that. That's a nice simple one. So we'll bump it up to say 3 and do it. And here we are, we've found a valid solution. Um, and we can then have a quick look. You'll notice that the summary page is just a little bit different than before. As well as the pipes, we've also got the exhaust listed here. So we can see the a pressure drop on the exhaust. But we've got no exhaust length, so that's why it's zero. We can also see the characteristics of the detector here as well. So all these are now listed together in this table. And the sampling point is just a little bit different than before. We actually can see um, the alert action fire one fire two sensitivities all here, and we can um, see some of the other properties. And it's like the pipe table; we can switch on and switch off columns. So we could decide we don't want to have the tube diameter, and we can change the position. So we might decide to move it uh, a column like that. So that's the main changes that are happening here. But what I want to emphasize is that what you need to focus on is very much a sensitivity objective. Your thresholds will get calculated for you from that um, and that's really about the main thing you need to worry about. Um, I said before that there's advanced interface. The advanced interface is just pretty much for the detector like it was previously. You'll see that it starts to look more complex but a lot of these properties um, were there with the simplified interface but um, more only the major uh, properties are really highlighted there. Um, again we have the exhaust and detector in this summary table um, here's the group table and the sampling point um, table as well. One thing that's changed though is in the group table there's a checkbox here to indicate whether you really do care about aggregating smoke. Essentially the concept is you can aggregate smoke from a number of holes so that a group of holes together act as a super hole. Um, a lot of codes don't really support this. Um, a, lot of holes, a lot of codes deal with each sampling point having its own sensitivity, in which case you really just need to focus on this table here. But um, this is an advanced concept and the group concept is useful in a couple of cases where you do want to group holes together. You might have a number of holes in front of a grill um, that you want rather than one big hole. Um, that's one case. And sometimes you want to have different essentially sensitivity targets from the one detector. So you can have to find different groups that are essentially having different aggregate targets for the one detector. But this is not the common approach and hence this is, appears only on your advanced um, interface. So in general I would recommend that you stick with a standard interface um, and as I say you have the other properties there. So there's properties here like the type of pipe defaults you want to use. You can pick those or you can define your exhaust and there's environment settings like what air temperature or relative altitude you are. Uh, relative altitude is just the altitude relative to where the project's based. So we go to the project, there's an altitude here of zero metres indicating we're at sea level. Um, but if we were putting a system at say La Paz at 4,000 metres, then we would uh, want to set this to say 4,000 metres. 
and if we then had a series of detectors at different floors on a multi-story building there then we might give them different altitudes we might have one at 10 meters another at 20 meters relative to where the project's at so that's the concept of what the relative altitude is just is relative to where the project um, altitude is i'll put this back to zero meters here so uh, essentially there are all the the settings and i encourage you to um, work with this um, i think you'll find it will simplify life and uh, should help you still build good um, effective designs so thank you